We know that Antonio Rosmini was a great philosopher, but it's not as well known that he was also an economist or a philosopher of the economy. Uh, Rosmini uh, lived in a very difficult time when we see the end of, the, of an old world, the pre-revolutionary pre world, pre-French revolution, and also before the Industrial Revolution. But when Rosmini was developing his works, he started to see a great transformation that was going on in his country, Italy, and also in Europe, that was the birth of the industrial world, the birth of a market that could be extended all over Europe and that changed not only the uses of a society, but also the institutions and the way in which the people s were organized until that time. That's why it's important to see how Rosmini's time is similar to us. In fact, now we are living a transformation that could be compared globalization, a post-industrial economy, what was going on during those Rosmini's times that was the transformation from, as I said, a pre-revolutionary world to a post-revolutionary world. What is the project of Rosmini in relation to, f to, to the economy? In the first place, w there it's an important factor to see that uh, Rosmini was well aware of what was going on in economics or, as it was called in that moment, uh, about political economy. Uh, many authors have talked about the cultural, ec the, the economic culture of a friend of Rosmini that was Alessandro Manzoni, but not many has noticed, have, not, uh, have noticed that uh, Rosmini was also well aware of the situation of economics. He knew perfectly well, perfectly well the, the works of Adam Smith, for example, and also the works of Malthus and uh, David Ricardo and finally, one of the French members of the classical school, Jean-Baptiste Say. But these were not only the, the only economists that he, that he read. We also know that Rosmini was well aware of the works of Sismondi and of another Swiss, uh, von Haller. And he was also uh, in a very close relation wa with what is called the Italian civil economy that developed in, in that country uh, from the 17th century to the 19th century with many names, many famous names like Beccaria, Genovesi, Ortes, Muratori, Broglia. And we could also quote here two very important economists that had a debate in a, that were contemporaries to Rosmini, Gian Domenico Romagnosi and Melchiore Gioia. These two economists were, in a certain sense, the representatives of the utilitarian economy or the Benthamist economy in Italy. So if we see uh, the many authors, the many economists that Rosmini read, we can understand how he could combine his philosophical, his deep philosophical insights with his knowledge of the theory of the economy or that, that was represented by these uh, authors that I have quoted. But at the same time, Rosmini was well aware of what was, his, what was going on in the practice of economy. Uh, as we know, the, the family of Rosmini owned a small, uh, a small industry of silk in the north of Italy, in the city of Rovereto. So Rosmini knew uh, very well the dynamic of a business and he was also very sympathetic of what was the, the commercial transformation, the market transformation that was taking place around Rovereto in the north of Italy. 
As we know, the north of Italy is a, a very important industrial region, and this region was uh, developing in that time when Rosmini was a young priest and afterwards when he became one of the most important thinkers of the Italian philosophy. Uh, the, the point of departure of Rosmini is then this uh, vision of what was going on in the theory, in political economy, and also in the practice, in the market and industrial transformation of his time. But what is the nucleus, what is the central core of his philosophical insight of the economy and of economics? As I had said before, uh, this uh, nucleus is the debate with utilitarianism. According to Rosmini, economic science was born in relation, in a very cro close relation with utilitarianism. But that didn't mean to him that uh, e economics or political economy is essentially linked with utilitarianism. According to Rosmini, the link, the relationship between economics and utilitarianism is only a, a historical relation. It's not an essential relation. We cannot say that economics is essentially utilitarian, but this alliance between um, economics and utilitarianism is a product, is a result of a, of a historical circumstance, of a historical event. That's why Rosmini thinks that it is possible to separate economics from utilitarianism because and, uh, and, and replace this utilitarian philosophy as the basis of economics with another kind of philosophy that he tries to develop. And what are the main points of utilitarianism that according to Rosmini are inside economics, inside political economy? The first nucleus, the first point that he shows is the explanation that conventional or traditional economics, in his time was classical economics, uh, gave to the rationality of human choice. Human action is the, the, the core of the discussion, according to Rosmini. In the, from the utilitarian point of view, human action can be explained as an action that every agent does in which the, the main aim is to obtain the, what is called in the, in the utilitarian tradition utility or self-interest. According to this view, it is impossible for a human being to go beyond this search of self-interest or this search of one's own subjective utility. This idea that is very well known by Rosmini through the readings not only of the economists but also of uh, important English philosophers such as Jeremy Bentham, this idea of, uh, of rationality uh, assimilated to, to utility as the, as the description of the functioning of human action, this idea, according to Rosmini, is only half a truth. It has part of the truth. It describes something that is real, for example, this idea that we all look after our own subjective utility. This is part of the reality. But according to Rosmini, this is also only a partial view of human action. It's a part of, of what is going on in, in human choice. That's why he proposes as a first step to make this reform within economics to understand economic action in the context of another uh, broader uh, description of human action. And what is this description of human action for Rosmini? According to him, he, he's, he, he believes that this subjective dimension is a true dimension 
of the of the human being and of human action, this search of utility. But there's also a second sphere, a second dimension, that is the dimension of what we could call the objective, uh, the objective capabilities of human beings. These capabilities, these objective capabilities of human beings, beings are mainly two. The first one is intelligence. According to Rosmini, through intelligence we are able to go beyond our own senses, beyond our own passions, our own self-interest, and reach what Rosmini calls the objective good. There are two kinds, therefore, of goods. One that is a subjective good, the good of my own perfection, the good of my own subjective satisfaction, but there's also an objective good that is found, we could say, outside the subject. Rosmini doesn't like to use these physical metaphors because there's no an outside and an inside when we talk about human action. But to understand this, we could say that the objective good is a good that is different from the subjective satisfaction. And so, to reach the objective good, we need a certain special capability that is intelligence. Intelligence does not only understands what is going on in the subjectivity, but also is able to recognize something that is, go, that is, behind, that is beyond subjectivity. This is the first objective capability. There is also a second objective capacity that is the will and more accurately described the free will. Our free will is able to overcome what are the instincts and tendencies of our nature to, to our own satisfaction and reach this objective good as well as, it, as it's also reached in the theoretical field by the intelligence. In the moral field, free will is able to overcome instincts, natural tendencies and reach this objectivity and therefore be able to overcome the rationality of subjective satisfaction. These two capabilities can be uh, also synthesized in one conception that is the conception of the person. The human person is a double being in a certain sense without, being, uh, without having two, two beings in itself it has two dimensions that has to be considered the two together. The first is the subjective dimension, but there is also an, the subjective and moral dimension that changes the logic of uh, human satisfaction and also uh, explains, makes possible to explain in a different way the rationality of human action. In fact, according to Rosmini, the, the combination, the existence in the, in the human person of these of this two dimensions uh, permits us to understand that uh, in economic actions we, don't, we, we, we follow our subjective, our, our subjective satisfaction but we also follow our moral realization that is not reached by means by the same means as we reach the subjective satisfaction. And this is shown by Rosmini in many economic examples, in many economic actions. One very important of these actions, economic ac actions that is described by Rosmini is consumption. Uh, Rosmini talks about consumption in many of his works, in his works of youth, for example, his Politica Prima, his first politics, and he also uh, describes the problem of consumption in uh, other small essays, short essays that he writes, especially in his uh, debate with Melchiorre Gioia, this utilitarian uh, economist. Um, in these essays, uh, and we, and we and we had to add also we have to add also the the, um, the description of what is, what goes on in consumption consumption 
in the philosophy of politics that he writes in 1837. So there are many places where we can find the philosophy of consumption. And what does Rosmini say about, <coughs> about consumption from this personalistic point of view and in opposition criticizing ut an utilitarian view of consumption? Uh, from a utilitarian point of view, Consumption is only the result of the search of utility and self-interest and uh, subjective, subjective uti utility of the, the, agents, the agents in the market. But, uh, and this uh, consumption behavior is explained by uh, the utilitarian view as a search that never ends of more and more goods with uh, at the lowest cost, at, uh, at the lowest sacrifice, at the lowest price. But Rosmini uh, believes that in, even in consumption, this kind of ra utilitarian rationality is not a very good uh, kind of description. Because uh, when we consume, we not only search material things or subjective satisfaction, as a result of using or consuming these material, material goods. But we also, it, it also is present in the process of consumption, a moral factor, a psychological factor, that comes from what he calls the objective dimension of human nature. And there's a very important concept that he introduces to understand the, the logic of consumption, that is the concept of uh, in Italian called the apagamento. The idea of apagamento could be translated to English into English as content and maybe as happiness. It's not the same to speak of apagamento and happiness, whereas happiness means for Rosmini a, a complete satisfaction that is only found maybe in heaven uh, the apagamento is a satisfaction that could be found here on, on earth. And, um, but it's a different kind of thing, the apagamento, the content, to the subjective satisfaction that could be found, for example, in a pleasure. A pleasure or a sentiment of bodily satisfaction or even a psychological satisfaction is not the same as moral content, moral happiness, or apagamento. In the moral content, we not only, uh, it's not possible to find moral content as in the, uh, behaving oneself in, in the same way as one uh, does uh, looking for a subjective satisfaction. Whereas, uh, in the subjective satisfaction or in the search of a subjective pleasure, we just look for the thing that is going to give us this satisfaction as an instrument or as a means for ourselves. That, that's why it's a subjective satisfaction that is, is reached by this, utilis, this using, this subjective use of, of, of the good. Uh, the objective satisfaction or the content is reached not by the uh, by using the thing or the person, or especially the thing in, in a consumption, a consumption good, as a means for ourselves, but it's found in a paradoxical way by, the fo by forgetting ourselves, forgetting of our own satisfaction, and accepting the existence of an objective quality in things or in other persons that makes this satisfaction an indirect result. So, <laughs> it is possible, according to Rosmini, to, be, to have a subjective pleasure or to be, in a certain way, satisfied in the physical or psychological sense, but being unhappy or not having a pagamento or not, or not being content in a moral sense, because our happiness is reached only when we forget of ourselves, when we can reach this objective reality. And therefore, uh, maybe we have this uh, subjective pleasure, but we, we also 
have a lack of a connection with the moral world. What happens as a consequence in consumption when we take into account this factor of moral satisfaction, al pagamento, or happiness? Well, according to Rosmini, this transforms completely our judgments about consumption and also it could be said that it transforms completely our poli policies about uh, consumption in a macro uh, perspective. Uh, in what sense this, is, this change uh, uh, takes place? In the sense that people uh, include the, the, there's, a, there's a kind of uh, there's a difference between the conduct, the behavior of someone that, that is happy inside, that has a content and from the behavior of someone that is completely unhappy and feels very, very sad in a moral sense. So someone that is happy and feels content, probably, according to Rosmini, will have a consumer behavior very different from someone that, I that feels this emptiness inside. For example, the, the case of, of consumerism is explained by Rosmini through this theory. The, the absence of a moral content, of a moral happiness, because of the, of the impossibility of the person, of the individual, to go beyond his own satisfaction, produces, as a result, consumerism as a way of trying to reach this moral or, or spiritual happiness through goods, through the consumption of goods. Therefore, um, it is important to see that the person has to be taken into account when a certain uh, economic phenomenon such as, con as consumption is considered. Another example that gives uh, Rosmini about the influence of the personal dimension in, on, the, on an economic activity is work. As we all know, the theory of work, of labor, <coughs> has also been developed by economics. But economics, influenced by utilitarianism, tends to see work or labor <coughs> as something that can be produced or can be motivated by external incentives, by external pressures, by prizes and punishments, in a sense, in the same sense that was taught by the, by the founders of utilitarianism. According to Rosmini, this is partly true. We can see that people work well or start to work well when there is a kind of pressure uh, towards that, that, that makes their job uh, risky or their, their kinds of, of, of prizes or objectives that someone feels he, he or she could reach uh, working well. But uh, according to Rosmini, this is true, but it's not all the truth. There are also other kind of motivations that come from this moral and objective dimension that cannot be replaced by the utilitarian incentives that come from the outside. And which are these moral realities? In the first place, we could, we could say that Rosmini knows very well the importance of moral obligation, of compromise, of responsibility with oneself and with others, and especially with one's own family when we work. If we don't have this kind of intrinsic motivation, of these moral values that are assimilated by our subjectivity, it's very difficult to find a very solid basis to develop a work culture. That's why Rosmini rejects this to simplify the idea of uh, productivity, of competitivity uh, in the economic world uh, as a product or as a result of utilitarian incentives. And he believes that these incentives should be thought and should be, 
should be developed in a personal con in a personal context if there is no personal motivation if there is no moral dimension in the work in work well it's very difficult to develop a real uh, way of promoting productivity and this is very important not only for the people that that, that are developing this activity of working, but also for the people that try to make other work, especially um, businessmen and also the organizers of society and the, um, the, the members of governments who try to develop in a country a culture of work. Therefore, uh, Rosmini's personalism starts to give many insights, to offer us many insights in many fields that shows us that uh, human rationality is broader than what is described by utilitarianism and this uh, rationality open to the moral world that includes also self-interest individual utility the conjun conjunction of the two of the of, of these dimensions are important to understand how to develop a political economy in the in the rosminian perspective economics could be described as the science of utility or as the science of wealth rosmini doesn't doesn't try uh, to moralize um, economy from an ex the economics from an extrinsical point of view in the sense <coughs> that uh, economics should become only a branch of ethics or should be absorbed by an ethical perspective he's not a spiritualist in the sense of trying to falsely spiritualize economics. Rosmini believes that economics has its own autonomy, its own, its own subject, its own methods, but he also thinks that it should be uh, a connection between economics and ethics in the way in which ethics still remains as a separate discipline from economics but there's a mutual, there's a mutual nurturing, there's a mutual um, interrelation that enrich the insights of both. In, this, in the case of, of the social dimension of economics, it happens the same thing. Uh, economics has become, in a certain sense, uh, a technical discipline and has been progressively separated from politics and especially from a very important uh, branch of politics that is right. According to Rosmini, the economics should be related not only with individual ethics, with, the, with moral ethics, with, with the ethics of the individual, but also with social ethics and uh, thinking social ethics in a broad sense that would include a political philosophy and a philosophy of right. Therefore, uh, I think that uh, to take into account Rosmini today is important in order to avoid two risks that are going on in the academy and also in the political realm. <coughs> One risk is economism that is the idea of an expansion of economic science with its te technical and mathematical way of thinking and trying to understand all the other dimensions of society and of human action from this point of view that is called today economic imperialism and the other risk is of trying to absorb economics into a moral or a social science that destroys the insights of economics that are very um, uh, different from the moral world
but that they that have it, their own autonomy. That is why uh, Rosmini's project of an economic personalism tries to uh, maintain an equilibrium between these two extremes and build an, econom an economic science that is autonomous, that has its own logic, its, its own methods, but at the same time is open to an interdisciplinary view in order to understand in a more accurate and also practical sense the economic phenomenon.